Right, so we're going to do a very quick animation um, for PowerPoint presentations and meetings, etc. And we're going to slowly zoom into the data sets and change the angle and then zoom back out again and do that nice and smoothly and create a little movie for inclusion in PowerPoints. Um, so hit the animation button, that will bring up the controls here for these keyframes. So before you add the keyframes, um, normally I'll do the reset view to start from the top, but you can pick any particular view you need to. And then we'll add some frames, and then on the first click you get one end and then the other end. And if you add again, you get one halfway. If you add again, it starts to do these equally spaced frames. Um, so you can start to have you know, an equal set of um, positions you, you go to. Let's delete all of those for now. Um, and just have the three frames with one in the middle. Um, the number of frames will dictate how smooth it is or how many things you can include in this, this, this flight path, this transition between views. Um, this one's going to be a quick one, so I'm just going to change it to 200. And so on this middle frame selected with a white line, and you can see with these jump buttons, you can jump to different frames, or you can click on the frame. You see the icon changes to the arrows. You can actually move it back and forth as well to change the speed of the different transitions. So if I go to this middle one selected, zoom in, change my view. Don't forget you need to be in navigate mode here. Um, and change to a certain view like that and click modify. You can see as I scrub through, I'm clicking and dragging here. Um, you can see it goes to a different positions. Don't click and drag on the actual frame itself because it will move it. Um, so once you've moved it, then you can't find the equal di distance point. But it's not too important. It doesn't matter if the first bit's quick and then the second bit's slow. And you can see wherever you put it, you can change the, the motion of that movie. So let's just put it back to the middle again. Um, you can just use the play button as well and it'll show you roughly what you're going to get. What you get on the screen doesn't always match what you get from the movie because it has to be rendered so the movie displays as it should. So let's go ahead and render that by hitting record. Um, you've got a few different movie options here. If you don't see all of these different options, email or put in the comments and I'll show you where that is in the preferences. Um, I like to add the different options so you can have the .mov and the, and the older style MP4 and AVIs. The raw AVI is a big file and I'd avoid that one. Some of the H.264 movies I create have kind of strangely choppy compression in and out, so it looks good and then bad. So not had much luck with that one. I think I have most luck with this one, but it's uh, good to play around. We've got the options for how much compression or the size. So high compression, low quality would be a small file, and low compression, high quality would be a larger file. Um, this is the frame rate. Obviously, how many frames you have, and the frame rate would dictate how fast it plays and the size of the window you want for your output you know you can pick your your HD or whatever you need to do and I've done one before so I'm just going to overwrite this other one from playing around and that will go through and render there and then it will spit that out in your default player um, if you have trouble with things playing I recommend going and downloading um, VLC player that will play everything but mostly the Windows player does alright on our machines and then it will play that back um, one option I think they brought in is what's called anti-aliasing. You can see these funny lines down the side, maybe not on this YouTube video, but when you play yours, you may see some flashing lines down down the side here on, on the box. And so there is an option if you click on settings. Here, there's an enable anti-aliasing here, and we'll give that a go. So I'm going to click that one and record and overwrite with the same same settings and see how it goes and see what the output video looks like and that might be something you can uh, you can add if you need it to look crisper on on the box or you can just turn off the frame if you need to and just get rid of it here or change some of the frame settings maybe that would be useful too and so let's see what it comes out with that looks a little better um, I think the video compression is something that's going to make a difference too and then the video type you use okay so that's the basic animation I'm going to do a more complicated one next because there's a bunch of things you need to make sure you get in the right place um, because it gets a little complicated at times with too many things changing but you can do some really cool stuff